continuing our discussion about uncertainties and propagating uncertainty through equations, I want to say a word or two about how you deal with constants. Uh, things like multiplying by a constant or raising a number to a constant power, constants that don't have any uncertainty associated with them. Uh, these are seem like very different cases, but we'll see some nice parallels between them, and there are some related subtleties for each one that I want to talk about at the very end. But first of all, let's just talk about it. So, for instance, consider the example where I've measured the radius of some circle to be 4.3 centimeters with an uncertainty of 0.2 centimeters in that radius. I want to know the diameter of that circle. Well, okay, so if I want to do that, clearly I just multiply by 2 but to get the diameter, but what do I do with that uncertainty? It turns out the rule is really easy, you just double it too. So my diameter is equal to 8.6 centimeters plus or minus 0.4 centimeters. That's the diameter I come up with. Just double the uncertainty when you double the, when you double the base quantity. Now, another way of thinking about this is actually kind of useful, is to point out that the relative uncertainty stays unchanged in this case. So just for instance, the uncertainty in the radius, divided by the radius, that relative uncertainty in the radius, is equal to, I guess I should say, it's about 4.6%. That's 0.2 divided by 4.3. And that's actually going to be exactly the same as the uncertainty in the diameter divided by the diameter. Scaling by a constant doesn't change relative uncertainty. In fact, this is actually exactly the same procedure we would use if you're changing units on this. If I said that uh, the radius was equal to 0.043 meters, my uncertainty would clearly be 0.002 meters. And that's the exact same thing. I've, changing units is just scaling by a constant factor, in this case a factor of 100. Obviously, the uncertainty is going to scale in the same way. So this rule makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, so that's multiplying by a constant. What about when I take the area of a square, for example? Imagine I have a perfect square, I know it's a perfect square, and I've measured the sides to be length 12.0 centimeters plus or minus 0.6 centimeters. That's my uncertainty in the side length. I want to know my area. Well, I can do the same kind of thing. I can say I need to just combine my uncertainties, but remember, multiplication when we've talked about uncertainties and multiplication before, multiplication is a question of relative uncertainty. So I need to start by figuring out what the relative uncertainty delta L over L is. That's 0.6 centimeters over 12.0 centimeters. As usual, the units cancel out. 0.6 over 12 is 0.05, or in other words, 5%. So the easy rule for raising something to a power, raising an, an uncertain quantity to a power, is if I'm squaring it, if I'm raising it to the second power, I just multiply by 2. Whatever, I, whatever scale factor, whatever the exponent is, is the scale factor for the uncertainty. So in this case, I know that my delta A over A is going to be 2 times delta L over L. In other words, 10% my relative uncertainty in the area is going to be 10%. In this case, of course, my area is 144 square centimeters, because 12 centimeters squared is 144, and this is going to be plus or minus 10%, or in other words, 10% of that, this is 144 centimeters squared, plus or minus, my absolute uncertainty is just 10% of this, 14 square centimeters. I could say 14.4, but remember I, I always round off my uncertainty to one or at most two significant digits. When the first significant digit is a one, I almost always keep a second sig fig there, just, just to get a bit more precision in my uncertainty at those small levels. But okay, so this gives me a good estimate of the uncertainty in my area. And again, it's plus or minus 10%. That gives me a, de a decent estimate. You can see the parallels here. In this case, in the case of D, I doubled the absolute uncertainty. In the case of A, I doubled the relative uncertainty because sums, you can think of this thing as being kind of like D equals R plus R, in the same way that you can think of this one as being kind of like A equals L times L. And so it, sums have to do with absolute uncertainty, multiplication products have to do with relative uncertainty.
This is the point where there's a subtlety to mention. You may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, we've talked about uncertainties and sums before. Why is it that this is not supposed to be given by delta d equals the square root of delta r squared plus delta r squared, because that's the rule for adding uncertainties in quadrature for a, uh, for a sum. And hey, since those are the same, this would just be the square root of 2 times delta r. Uh, why isn't that the case? Why have I done, because if I multiply this out, square root of 2 times delta r is clearly not the same as 2 times delta r. Why isn't that the case? Same thing over on this side. You might have asked, why isn't delta a equal to the square, uh, delta a over a equal to the square root of delta l over l squared plus delta l over l squared, which again would be square root of 2 times delta L over L, which is a very different proposition than 2 times delta L over L. So you might be asking that question too. This is a multiplication. This is a sum. Why don't I use that good adding quadrature rule? Here's the key. Remember that these only apply for the case of independent independent random errors, independent delta r's. So if you have, the whole point of the quadrature rule was the assumption that the uncertainty in one, in one part of the sum is independent of the uncertainty in the other. They're sort of conceptually orthogonal, and so you use the square root thing to give your best estimate of how they'll combine. The idea here was, remember, sometimes a measurement of the first quantity the uncertainty would be a bit high, and the second one, the uncertainty would be a bit low, and they'd cancel out. And so, you know, by random chance, that would happen sometimes. So this is to account for that. In our case, R and R are the exact opposite of independent. They're the same quantity. So they're, in, they're anything but independent. We can't use this, this rule intended to properly estimate independent uncertainties. Any error in R, if, if R is a little bit too big, it's going to be too big in both terms of the sum. Same thing over here. If L is a bit too big, it's going to be a bit too big in both places. Those too big, that too bigness always reinforces itself automatically in these cases. So, in fact, we can't use this equation. We can't use this equation because those are only for independent cases. In fact, what we're really doing up here, this doubling up here, is in fact equivalent to what we called earlier the worst case sum, because it's the worst case scenario, right? You, you always know that if r is a bit too big, it will always be the worst possible combination with itself, because both will always be exactly the same amount too big, or the same amount too small. If Same thing over here. This is exactly the result of the worst case sum. If l is a bit too big, then that relative error in both will be too big, it'll reinforce itself instead of having any chance of canceling out. So that's why we have this doubling. That's why we have this doubling. That why we can't just do this quadrature business when we have the same quantity in both places. That's a good reminder that even though these are simple rules, it's important to keep in mind the assumptions that we always have in mind of independent random normally distributed error for each one. If you don't have those assumptions, you have to scale back and be much more cautious in the worst case scenario.